And you're recording. Hey, Sean, if you need to pee, you can pee anywhere. Don't have to go all the way up. Just Welcome pee in the woods, though. Don't pee on the grass. Video on the Pyramid One okay. Radio Network. We are your source for the latest news, music, and entertainment from around the world. Our programming is designed to keep you informed and entertained with a variety of content that will keep you engaged. Tune in to hear interviews with your favorite artists, exclusive live performances, and more. So sit back and relax as WKITDG Radio brings you the best in global radio entertainment. imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. Bob Charles. Oh yeah, you got the Bob Charles show. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into Bob Charles. The secret of the technology used in the crystal skulls has still not been unraveled. Don't forget, it's our world. Start taking care of it. It's time to think for yourself. Bob Charles. Open your heart to reality and to all the misinformation you hear. Just say no. Biodomes are enclosed environments designed to support and sustain various forms of life, typically plants and sometimes animals, in a controlled and artificial ecosystem. Biodomes can serve several purposes, including scientific research, conservation, education, and even potential colonization efforts. If the Biodome project in Brazil aims to create such an enclosed environment, it could potentially contribute to various areas of importance. Environmental conservation, biodomes can facilitate the conservation and protection of endangered plant and animal species. By providing a controlled habitat, it may be possible to preserve and propagate species that are at risk in the wild. Scientific research, biodomes provide controlled environments that enable scientists to study ecosystems, climate change, plant growth, and other related areas. The data and knowledge gained from such research can contribute to a better understanding of our environment and inform conservation efforts. Agriculture and food production, biodomes can be utilized for innovative agricultural practices, including vertical farming and sustainable food production. By optimizing environmental conditions, biodomes may help enhance crop yields, conserve water, and reduce the need for pesticides. Education and outreach, biodomes can serve as educational tools, allowing visitors to learn about ecosystems, biodiversity, and sustainable living. They can inspire people to engage in environmental stewardship and raise awareness about the importance of conserving natural resources. It's important to note that the benefits and impacts of a specific project can vary depending on its design, objectives, and implementation. Without more details about the specific biodome project in Brazil, it's challenging to provide an accurate assessment of its potential contributions to the world. All right, let's bring in David.
Oh, yeah, you're there now. All right, you got to turn. You, you muted yourself. Unmute yourself. You're muted. Now I'm not. No, I'm not no, no, not. I can I can see whether you are or not. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey. There, there we are. Sneaky Thank in. you. I'm sorry. I want to just say good evening to everybody that's listening and you know, welcome to the Bob Charles show. And this is gonna be a real exciting uh 30 minutes or so, whatever it takes. We're gonna to try to help educate the public on some really interesting developments about biodome in Brazil. And as you heard with the introduction, you know, biodomes are scientific uh, discoveries that we're just going through to try to understand how we can uh, come to optimize and, and really maximize the value of our living systems here on Earth with the ultimate goal of, of spreading those uh, biodomes uh, into, into orbit, into Mars and into the moon and other planets as, for that matter. You, um, but in addition to the physical biodomes, I want the uh, listeners to understand that biodome has two functions. One function is a physical form, which is only 1%, actually, a very, very small uh, percentage. 1% is the physical, and 99% of what the biodome does is, is uh, metaphysical. That's 99% is not physical. So we can talk about the benefits of physical domes and, and they're wonderful with vertical gardens and producing the foods that we eat nutritiously and, 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 and creating habitat uh, that, that's sustainable. So the benefits of physical uh, biodomes are, are numerous, but the benefits of the non-physical and what we're talking about is the fifth dimension and elevation from our fourth dimension to the fifth dimension. And in the biodome we are, we are proposing here in Brazil on the coast of Sao Paulo, Brazil, is, is a electromagnetic smart grid, uh, a matrix. And that, that matrix uh, is very precise, the most precise precision for location and, and for GPS. It's, it's beyond the military applications. This is extraterrestrial intelligence that actually has, has given us these new tools. Um, and so the biodome in Brazil is not a physical dome, Bob. Uh, not, not right now. Uh, the, the whole idea of what we're trying to do is we're trying to optimize our Earth system first. And we don't want to put a dome over a place like where we live here in Brazil. It's already very natural. We don't need a dome. We have all of the life uh, with the ocean and the islands in, in the deep forest, the rainforest. So we have the biosystems here to be an example of the natural intelligence that, that this planet has. And so right now, this weekend, which is called Soul Weekend, which is June 23rd to the 25th. We start this evening. This this is the first call. Right, yeah. This is the first call. So um, this is opening up a, a weekend full of activities and, and different podcasts that we're going to be recording. So your viewing audience uh, can look at this information many years in the future and can refer back to this weekend as being a very important weekend for humanity. In my opinion, as important as the testing of the atomic weapons in our nuclear weapons, we're talking about the possibility of evolution for our humanity, Bob. And it's exciting. It's an exciting time to be alive. And there's no reason to be fearful of AI and machines because we are, you are, I am, Bob. We all are super intelligent. We just need to have the, 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 the direction and the guidance to remember that we are perfect, that God in creation has created us all individually perfect, and we're connected by soul. And that's what this weekend is about. So I know you have some questions. You know, I'd, I'd like to try to, if any callers want to call in, I would love to have live callers. Uh, yeah. But if it doesn't happen on this show, you can reach me in the future and I can talk directly with you. I'd love to give you all of the facts and details. 
All right. At the, at the end of the show, you can give us all the information of how they get in touch with you, and that's so they they have that too. And this this show can be seen on Rumble tomorrow, and it will also be on YouTube tomorrow. They hate me, but it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they hate me too, actually. Well, we we I, mean, I think they hate everybody. That's the problem. We always, we always come up with innovative ideas. You know, they don't like ideas. You know, if they didn't make the idea, forget about it. You can't. Exactly. If, you can't. You can't. I was gonna, yeah. I was going to say, if it's their idea, it's a good idea. If it's anyone That's else's, yeah. they're, they're just going to ignore you. They're yeah. just not going to answer one of your calls. Absolutely. Yeah, we know how that feels very, very well, actually. <laughs> Another thing, too, you said you were by San Paulo? Yes. Okay. We're right on the coast. We're only about two hours from the big city of about 22 million people. All right. It's huge. Isn't it a a, a vortex in that area? There's many vortexes here. And actually, when you look at the ancient, ancient spirit trails, we have a, we have a vortex and actually the biodome is the project that I sponsor as a consulting firm. It's called ePort, which stands for the eternal energy portal. So actually, when people ask me, Bob, what do I do and what is bi- uh, biodome, uh, dome, the, what does the biodome do? It's a portal. It's exactly what you, you're mentioning. It's a vortex. And the idea is that we can stimulate those grids. And like you talk about the crystal skulls in mm-hmm. and, and, and all of these networks, all we are missing, we're missing the last piece. That's all we're missing. We have done a good job, a very good job, actually a perfect job, according to consciousness. Everything is in perfect order. But our evolution and our our state of of humanity right now living on the edge of the tipping point, something has to happen. Either we're going to evolve or we're going to perish. And and with AI and with these new technologies, what we're proposing is to combine artificial intelligence with our natural intelligence, our authentic nature. And and the result, if you combine those, is a total intelligence or what we call TI. And that's going to be a famous term that uh, you're going to hear a lot. TI, TI, TI. Because AI is not enough, Bob. We need to combine the natural uh, element, which is the soul. And that's why this weekend is called Soul Weekend, because we're going to talk about everything in two days that people can become enlightened before they leave here. Or at least they're motivated to find out more information so that they can enlighten themselves at their house or wherever. But actually, this weekend is about activations, uh, activating the soul, our collective soul. And like you had said, there's there's a vortex that already people around the world talk about, many of them in Brazil. There's ancient cities, for example, in the Amazon that have, have never been de- been discovered in huge cities, not with one or two pyramids, with with hundreds or thousands of pyramids. Well, don't so forget, don't forget what happens down by you. I mean, those cities that even the ones that they have found, they had a dig out. I mean, they were, right. under, they were under hundreds and thousands of years of trees, green, uh, uh, the fungus, snakes, <laughs> you know, with all nine yards. I mean, these things, these things were there a long time. Look, as many times as people say to me all the time, Bob, you're crazy. I don't think I'm that crazy. We <laughs> are not. We are not. I mean, I would believe that for people with our consciousness and our brains and, and some kind of uh, an idea to what this rock is, this is like the 14th or 15th time there's been a civilization on this rock. We have, look, every single one of them, it took thousands, of, a couple of thousand years net to do it, but every single one of the civilizations didn't succeed. They wound up blowing themselves up or killing themselves off. Or some kind of a disease, or something, or some kind of a, a anomaly to the to their their DNA broke up, or something. Who knows? Whatever. But the thing is, every single one of them failed. But there was a reason to every single time they failed. They just didn't go away. Like they they keep on saying about uh, you know tri- tribes that were in Mexico and things. Now that's huge. And I was at their 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 
pyramids and things. I was there. And it's an amazing place. These people were amazing. People that did the work that they did with no tools. They didn't have they didn't have uh, Home Depot. <laughs> you know, it was like, hey, you know, like we, we're going we're to carve this thing out of whatever. The, this is because of the energy from the planet that actually powered these people, empowered these people to do what they do or did. And each one of those flapped over into the next civilization, then the next civilization. And the one that we have now, if you notice, people are trying to put us down. Us that are, that are thinking, that are, that are light people. That, that want to better ourselves, that want to evolve into the next, the next, uh, you know, the next stage of a human humanity, I should say. All of these things, they try to put you down, put you down, put you back, put you back. Why? Because that's the negative energy. We want to, we want to promote positive energy, positive energy, like the, the kind of stuff in that, like the word love is the, is the, the word itself, just saying the word, is throwing energy all over the all over the world, all at once, all in one one shot. Yeah, absolutely. And if I can chime in for a second, would you just Go. you mentioned you mentioned the magic word of love, but but think about this, Bob. We have a lot of love in this world, mm. but the problem, really, Bob, is that we have love, and it comes with conditions. What we need to do as a, as a society, as humanity, is talk about unconditional love. Yeah. Because yeah. we are confused. We are confused because love with conditions is a nightmare, is punishment, is pain and torture, because you can never satisfy those conditions. And, and it, ju it just put pressure on, and that's the pressure that we have in the world. You know, you mentioned you know, things like suicide and, and our tendency as humans right now to c be committing an instinctive behavior to wipe ourselves out. Don't forget, you're being, thing, told, you're being told to do it. Don't forget. Yeah. But the one thing that differentiates a human, Bob, from any other animal or plant or any other consciousness is simply that we have the ability to kill ourselves. And that is something that you cannot program a computer or a robot to do. Mm. It's not going to it's not going to take itself out. Once the once the program is set, the, the the AI follows that program. But ultimately, the the natural intelligence that we have is about the de the dying process. And it's a whole field of study called tanatology. Tanatology might be a new word for the listeners or anyone interested, but it's a whole subject about the dying process or the death process. And the fact is that our science now and all of our, all of, all of our information and the facts say that, the, that life is eternal. And also quantum physics, one of the general rules about uh -huh. quantum physics is that life is eternal and life is one. There's one source. Call it God, call it creation, call it consciousness or whatever. Call it 0 .00 absolute is what we call it. Because 0 .00 absolute is at the center of everything and everybody. It's a mathematical fact. It's, a, it's not just a theory. It's proven that at 0 .00 absolute, some people call that the zero point field. But the, the problem with terms like zero point is it's not at the center. The word absolute is what makes it a final determination, a guarantee. That's why the words point, zero, zero, absolute in that sequence is a magic key. And when you turn that key, it unlocks your creativity directly to source. And so what we teach here this weekend is to how, how people can surrender and basically uh, dematerialize or disintegrate and come from the fourth dimension to the third dimension, second, first, and arriving at the zero D, uh, the zero dimension, or what's called the zero D void. That is the zero point field. But once you get to that field, we teach an extra step. The last step and the final step and the most important step is to go to the center of that void. You cannot find that, that center, Bob. It's space. 
It's as vast as all of the universes combined ever. All of intelligence is there at the zero D void. Mm -hmm. All of intelligence. And, and so what we do is we teach people to have the courage to surrender all of their conditions that they have with themselves and with other people, because it all comes down to unconditional love. That is our purpose as being humans, to experience that. And when you experience it, hopefully you do it before you you're, you're pass away and, and pass out of your physical body. Hope, hopefully you can share that unconditional love with everyone that you come across. Everyone, it's, it's a religion in some ways. In many ways, everything is a religion. Let me give, you, so, let me give you a quick story. We'll stop right where you yes. are, and I'm gonna let you continue from that spot. Anyone out there that remembers the 60s, okay? Anybody, I don't care who they are. I'm, I'm, I'm an old man, I, you know, whatever. I, I've been around a little bit. Everybody was yelling, love. You know what? That right there was the starting point for what David is talking about right now. Those were people that it was a beta test. Everybody loved everybody else. Nobody cared what color you are, what creed you are, whether you were Jewish, a Baptist, a Catholic. It did not matter. Our religion at that time in all all anyone that, that that were what they called hippies at that time, all of it was the light of God. All didn't matter what you were or what creed you were, what color you were. There wasn't, you know, people used to. Nobody said red, black, yellow, white. Nobody said, and especially nobody said racist. Nobody. You know what they said? My friend. My brother. You're mine. My my sister. Whatever. This is the these are these are the pronouns supposedly that they're they're changing and that all over the place. Instead of just saying that as opposed to black, yellow, whatever, you know, as, as it goes down the line, they're separating yeah. our civil. They're trying to anyway separate our civilization in humanity from the, the, the whole sphere of what and the area that we live in. For That's us, right. We have to go back to the egg and say what you're saying, go back to the soul. Because right. number one, number one, the soul is energy. Right? I'll give you a little joke. Yeah, anybody ever see that pink rabbit with the uh, with the battery in the back that goes around that going, you know? And they call it the, the what's it the little bun? You know, I forget what they call it. There's some the little pink rabbit or something that goes around on commute on uh, commercials and things. Yes, it's it's really really funny. But if you take out that battery, what happens to that rabbit? It stops. So what is the power that makes us who we are? that soul and that soul believe it or not is listening to you all the time it's in there right. it doesn't make you do anything because people can do things wrong i don't think a, a soul would turn around and say hey listen you got to go shoot somebody no the soul is love period whether you use it or not that's up to you to learn to use it david has an idea and it's a pretty good well, idea yeah, it's a really great idea, and I got to keep coming back to it. You know, you you reference historical events like in the '60s and '70s with all of our our efforts with a movement like a revolution yep. that would take place. Yep. But what we're talking about, Bob, is a different. It's a different phenomenon. This requires you to take that quantum leap. There is no war. We have no war with each other. War and separation and conflict and discrimination and all of the things that you mentioned during the, the flower days in the golden days in San Francisco and in the in the West. Oh, yeah, oh yeah. All all of that, all of that was necessary for us to be where we are today because now as a community, we realize that love with conditions is not the love that we deserve. Anybody. Nope. Nope. We deserve unconditional love. 
look at our judicial system, Bob. Our judicial system is all about attorneys and entering into co binding contracts that have terms and conditions. Even like Facebook, for example, has over 14,000 words that they use before you can even use their service. What we're trying to do is be a game changer. Like our, our, we have three words that we use for our terms and conditions. And those words are do no evil. Simple. What is evil? It's conditional love. That is evil because that's trying to fool people that I love you, I love you, and lovey dovey. And at the end, that you get a, you get stabbed in the back with a condition. You can never get away from the condition. You're you're a hostage in that situation. So what we're proposing this weekend is to really enforce the language that we use. Because those, those words that we put together, like even having this conversation this evening, can be picked up by AI and can be picked up by other forces that may be using that information to really be toxic and to be evil and not to be unconditional, to have conditions. Some people try to get that information so that they can, they can benefit individually. Unconditional love is one love, one love for yourself and one love unconditionally for everything, everything God created, everything that came from consciousness, everything and everyone, not only the things that are possible, Bob, but also the things that are impossible. The, all of this data is already stored in a data warehouse. It's oh, a cloud. It's oh, a cloud. It's a, all of the data. Our conversation right now is already recorded in the archives, in the public records. It's already been recorded in our next conversation, in our next, in our next, in the ones that we had in the past. So it's past, present, and future. That's the biodome. The biodome is technology that ties into consciousness and, and into manifestation, into the soul, into our unconditional love that we have for God and for our creator, and for each person is so wonderful. Every life matters. All right, I just want to tell you one thing that the, the, the servers did kick out. So, but it's all on Skype, and I will have it recorded, so. Excellent. Yeah, but I'm that, sure it'll be fine. That is a Friday. So anybody that tried to go to tune, tune in or stream a, oops. Yeah, I tried to get around to you automatic, but I couldn't. Thanks for trying. It wouldn't it wouldn't go. But on the other hand, like I said, this is all this is all being recorded anyway. And it's on uh what's this on our servers too. So you, you can hear it uh, what's this there'll be an audio track too. The thing that the thing that uh, that's why that's why people aren't calling because they can't hear it. You know what I can do though? Uh Maybe it will be, no, maybe it will be just Skype. Uh, let me see what I can do on this end. I'm gonna try to trick it. Can I? Yeah, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to do this show again but this time, or the next time, we're going to bring in everybody we possibly can. Okay, I would say, okay, now we are on. And as a matter of fact, since everybody is just uh, going to listen to us, mm, like they are, but it's going to be on Ram Rumble, and it's going to be on YouTube, so and it's going to be passable, and it's going to be on Facebook, but we are going to make sure that... Maybe I did something right. Let's see. Get something going. Mm -hmm. Even streamers down. My good. Okay, that's that one. 
Yeah, they've been they've been having a lot of things that with with the servers and things around the world. As a matter of fact, because I get I get all the bulletins and everything else on yeah. what they're doing. One, one of the things one of the things that people don't realize, Bob, is how vulnerable we are. Oh, to, they, to well, our computer system and specifically specifically one target which is a buoy off the coast of Africa, which is called Point Zero Zero. Mm -hmm. this, this place is where the longitude and latitude on Earth come to zero, the, the origin. The, the, it's an artificial point. It's not the real zero point zero zero absolute because it doesn't have the absolute. But this, this place called Null Island, Point Zero Zero, that's the GPS. This place is where all the data in all of all of our communications goes to it's a data warehouse and graveyard they call it the data graveyard and so the the systems that we're using for communication we are vulnerable if they shut off point zero zero we don't get communication in one in one switch the whole world would be out the whole world you talk about havoc if we can't communicate, even, even with the uh, technology that we have, what, what it, how limited it is, if we can't communicate, our society is strangled. And people, you talk about violence in the streets and mayhem oh. and, and oh, yeah. people just going crazy. Something just is, is about to explode. So the biodome system is a specialized system that uses a quantum radio frequency in a new technology that's just designed by Google Labs and MIT, which is called time crystals. The time crystals are, are, the, are, are like a chip, like a computer chip, but it uses a water, a hydrogen, uh, supercharged hydrogen base. Basically, you take water and you remove the oxygen. So now you just have pure hydrogen. And then you, and then you magnify that hydrogen and it, and it can hold energy. And that, and that, and it, and the energy is communication. Like the words that we're using right now with each other is sending electromagnetic vibrations. Each word has what's called a biomarker or a biosignature. Every word that we use, and that's why you said, you know, back in the day in the '60s when people used the words of love and peace and harmony and gratitude and. That's why it invokes that 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 sense of positiveness of, of good energy, not not that negative energy is bad because you cannot have positive without the negative. They work together. They work in harmony like a man and a woman works when they make love. And, and so it, it, it's connected. The negative that we talk about in society is very fearful. Energy doesn't have fear. Energy comes from consciousness and God's creation. There is no fear. There's only unconditional love. And that's, I cannot can go back. Everyone says, David, please be exact. What do you want me to do? And now it took 25 years, Bob, and a lot of conversation with people and a lot of debating with people. And now I finally arrived and I can say to people honestly and unequivocally, all I expect is unconditional love for myself and for you. If I can deliver that, that is the greatest gift since Jesus walked the earth and said that we're going to be saved and that he's going to die for us and be resurrected and, and, our, and our, our, our soul would be eternal. You know, this is, this is cutting edge. This is really happening. You know, we are, we are doing everything in our power as a small nonprofit. We, we, you know, obviously, you know, the budget and finances is an issue for everybody. But for us, it's really not, Bob, because we are so privileged. We have natural resources that are abundant. And all we have to do is, is convert those resources into wealth. And then the wealth will communicate, whether it's a, a token like a cryptocurrency or an, an NFT or some uh, virtual digital uh, money. Doesn't have to be the physical US dollar or the yen, or it doesn't have to be one world currency. See, that's what people are promoting for the economy and for poverty and, and to come up with one currency. No, no, it shouldn't be one currency. Our communities are unique. 
in the culture in every community in every geographic area is very special. How people live together in villages in community is precious, is precious with the arts and the humanity and the hospitality and tourism. It's, it's precious. So we don't need one currency. We need a system like Biodome's proposing to be able to offer a time bank, a time bank. And what is a time bank? It's very simple. For one hour of meaningful, passionate work that you do, you get one time coin. That time coin can be utilized in an in a exchange system in the community for any sustainable product or service, any sustainable, because what people do will exchange time. So people will help each other. This is not a new concept. Edgar Kahn. Yeah, let, the, let me ask you a quick question, though. That sounds like bartering. It is bartering, but it's all of the above, Bob. But, it's an integrative system. It includes everything, everything but, conceived. See, a lot of people don't understand. That bartering is what built all the civilizations that are on the planet right now. It was all bartering. People didn't have it. Way back, man, people did not have money. There was no such thing as money or, or uh, you know, coins that you could get on the Internet or whatever. There was none of that. It was all like, I'll give you a squirrel if you give me half a deer, you know, whatever. I mean, it was it was a fur for a diamond or, or whatever, you know. But, and everybody put, like, a worth of whatever they were bartering with. Like if I give you a dozen tomatoes, you're going to give me, uh, you know, one or two or three pieces of corn, maybe. Or, you know, those kind of things can be exploded into a lot bigger, bigger things to barter. And it's right. money but is not essentially needed yes. if we just share. Right. But not, so not socialist share. We're talking, like, as you said. The, the the love, the unconditional love. I mean, people, you know, I'll tell you something, and it's and I hear it all the time. In fact, I was just at a huge veterinarian place net today. It was pretty funny. I went to see some people there. Um, the the thing is, all you hear is animals with unconditional love, and people don't revert back to the ones that brought the love to the animals that the animals could give back was the humans. We right. were the smart ones. We were the ones with the brains. We were the ones. Look, I got a dog here. Every single time I walk in the door, his, his paw goes up in the air and he smiles. Why? It's unconditional love. They like, oh, oh, my, 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 my play toy just walked in the door. <laughs> you know, it was yeah. one of those kind of things. But now, uh, if it's between a man and a woman or something, the woman will, you know, open up the door or she'll, she'll. Smile, smile or something, and the, the guy will do the same back and forth, and who knows, maybe a hug and a kiss, whatever. There is the unconditional love that's going on. And don't even get me started on that side, because what I believe in XX and XY. Anything in between, no. Sorry, don't work. I mean, you know, and, and society right now, especially up here in America, are... In Florida, in Florida especially, right? No, 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 no. Florida, they cut it out period. It, it don't happen here. Yeah. It's almost, it's not outlawed, but it's like, uh, it's just not, not happening here. I mean, the people that, that are down here, are, you know, they, they, once in a blue moon, you're going to see, you know, some kind of a, a weird thing or somebody dressed up like Halloween. You know, I mean, it's not, you're not going to see that in Florida. Florida is a, is a red state. It's, uh, it's, it, it's, you know, I, we want the rest of the world to live us, leave us alone. You know, we, we do things like human that's, beings do things, you know. Yeah, but Bob, I don't mean to stop you, but that's the that's the, the shift that we have to make in our society is that we're not separate. Just because you live in a, a geographic place doesn't mean that that place is not owned by all of us on this earth. The, the yeah. earth resources that we have. So the separation is the language. Anytime that we talk about them versus us, like the red and the blue, right. and we 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 and we don't balance the conversation. We in the only way to balance it is stay unconditional. That's the only way because with a condition, you will never you will never come out uh, 
you know, uh, without pain and suffering. Well, <laughs> if you, you see, have yeah. conditions, that's, well, that's but, what I was saying to you was down here in Florida, we understand the, the word love. Bingo. That's it right there. When you unconditional go out, love, right? When Unco you go outside, yeah. Unconditional love. When you go outside of this area, people are thinking something stuff in your face and saying, oh, this is the yeah. way you have to do it. I lived, I lived in Florida for many years, and I don't mean to like bash Floridians or anybody, anybody in general. But the last thing that the Florida is 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 working in harmony and unity. There's separation, especially with the Republican Party. I'll point them out right away. Very powerful, very powerful in Florida, and they want that separation. I have firsthand experience with this okay. with this topic you know, you know and so what, what what we're trying to do with soul weekend is we're trying to stop people in their tracks from using any words or any phrases or any any message of separation because that is what causes the condition unconditional love has no separation there's only a singularity there's never them versus us there's not a war. There is no revolution. There but, is nothing. There is nothing to do. You put it in the hands of the creator. The creator does everything uh, in unconditional love. And, and, and so we don't have to like stay busy about what do we do? What do we do? Because people ask me, Bob, all the time, you know, it sounds complicated. What do I need to do? And I say very simple. You need to stop and turn around. If your life is not unconditionally loving, just stop and turn and look backwards and, and, and go in that motion because wherever you went to was not where you wanted to go. And now most people are confused in their life and they're running in circles and uh, they, don't have, they don't have the grounding, they don't have the direction, but that is what point zero zero absolute offers. It's the only place mathematically that's fixed, is absolutely fixed. It's the only place in mathematics. And that's the problem with our current mathematics, quite honestly, is that we don't have a fixed variable. We peg time. Usually in a mathematical equation, like astrophysics and stuff like that, you peg time as, as your variable that's fixed. But time is not fixed, Bob. In, in, at point zero zero absolute, the past, present, and future are one. So you cannot tell what time it is. All you can do is be in the moment of now, because then you don't have to worry what time it is ever. All you're doing is being present and living to the fullest. Well, and I can reach your potential and your success is your potential reaching your potential. I got a question. When is this meeting and where? This meeting that we're having is is happening right now. People are starting to arrive. It's Friday evening. It's dark here. We're on Evolution Island. This place is called Evolution Island. That's our brand. It's actually nautically called in GPS coordinates, Ila Das Covis, San Sebastian. But that's very difficult, especially for Americans or English-speaking people. So Evolution Island is where we are. We're expecting over the weekend to have approximately around 30 people, but we also are a public facility. And we're an island just off the coast of the mainland here. We have a, a very large tourism uh, following here, a lot of hospitality guests. And so any day we can, we can receive additional 50 or 100 people that come on different boats and just come here for a few hours. And so this is really like a, a magnet, like a hub, like an attraction. And, well, and, the, and the idea is that what we can offer here is healing and cleansing for people to do what's called biohacking. We have systems and we have devices. I don't need to get into all of the details right now, but very, very positive uh, developments, not just promising developments, developments in the laboratory that we've replicated using these electromagnetic tools and vibrations and resonance to heal everything in your body. There is no disease. And when you mention things like food 
in in the, in in like a Hunger Game that people are playing right now. In the future, AI and technology, we are not going to have to physically eat anything. By eating a plant or an animal, you're actually killing that for your own benefit, which is artificial. We have the uh, biosignatures for every food and every chemical, Bob. And we can send those biosignatures to you electronically so that if you have a certain deficiency with a vitamin or mineral or something in your diet that you need to be adjusting, we can send you that in a pulse in instantly. And you don't have to digest it, which, which produces uh, poop. Shit, it produces shit. And the problem, <laughs> for example... Yeah. And, you know, in the future, our, our bodies are going to adapt and evolve so that we don't have to process the food, especially the, the live animals. And not, not that I'm against beef. I eat beef. I'm also vegetarian. I'm also vegan. I appreciate eating anything because I live on an island and sometimes I don't have food. Sometimes I drink water for nine days one time. I had just water, the mineral water that we have here which was nutritious enough for me to maintain health. And actually, after nine days, Bob, quite to be honest, I felt better. I felt like I had detoxed. I felt, I felt stronger. I felt clearer. I was speaking clearer, and I am speaking clearer. You know, the whole point is that with uh, our intelligence now and with the data that we're able to process at the speeds of beyond light, not even light speeds, our processors using time crystals have not even been calculated as far as the speed or the volume of data that the system can handle, Bob. That hasn't even been measured because they don't, there is no end to it. It's an, it, it's an infinite, an, an infinite energy uh, perpetual field. And so um, the technology is our savior. I'm a, I'm a firm believer. I speak and, and, I, and I preach about how we can work with uh, machines and how machines can really make our lives a lot easier and so that we have more time to be with our family, the, the people that we unconditionally love and want to be with, and, and more recreation time and more leisure time and, and, and more hospitality and, and serving people and, and being there to help the, the young and the elderly especially. The, the disenfranchised groups in our society, you know, um, everyone's voice matters. Without a free, open voice, which is our chakra and our throat, without that, the heart energy cannot go into the upper chakra, the, 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 the crown chakra. It can't go there. It gets stopped in the throat. So for perfect health, human health, we have to do these things like speaking on this podcast is a great way. I feel great and I feel energized and I want to try to just offer everything in unconditional love to you, Bob, to the viewers, to anybody interested in, 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 in consciousness, in, in unconditional love. I just want to spread that all over as much as I possibly can. Here's, here's a question, though. When you're going to are you going to be like a speaker with a bunch of people sitting in front of you? The, the format right now is, is pretty open because I've invited uh, various film producers. The idea is to have some live coverage and also some drone and 360 uh, uh, videos. And in doing like Zoom meetings and podcasts, I have, I think, three or four podcasts that are, are lined up. And so the whole idea is to try to create a library of content for this first annual. This is the first annual. We're planning on doing this again next year in June. I don't know the exact date in June. It's going to be in the month of June. It's really important for, for it to be in June uh, for our, our situation here. It's a great time to do an event. So I don't know the actual outcome, and I don't want to really know the actual outcome. Um, you know, to be surprised and to be at wonder is such a, a gift and, 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 to, and to be grateful for every breath that we take because that next breath just might be the breakthrough so that we can evolve as, as, a, as, a, as a humanity, everybody. And we need to do that together. And it has to happen instantly, like the COVID virus, for example. The COVID virus happened for a reason. 
and the issues with vaccines and all this stuff are real and they they are being paid attention to by consciousness but the consciousness needed the the virus to set up the neurological network for communications the first time ever in our planetary history were we able to shut down literally shut down the whole world and and do it quick and and convince people that if they didn't take this vaccine you were going to die your possibilities you're going to die so the stress on our society was enormous but that stress now is benefiting consciousness because evolution needs that neurological network the biodome system in the metaphysical system in the 5D world in the in the grid in the vortexes need need that to to operate and and so it's a wonderful time to be alive i guess that's really the message and thank god thank you bob again uh you know the more like for instance all right let, let me put it to you this way now when you got a bunch of people in the, you know in front of you that are talking about this program and everything and I'm, obviously i mean there's going to be you know a bunch of people maybe sitting at a table or something or 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 maybe maybe in front of you and you're a speaker or something if you have a laptop that you can open up and turn on the cam- camera i can put it on on screen and record it so other people can see other people enjoying what you're saying and listening yes. and learning well, it's a difficult moment right now because it is nighttime and the boat was delayed otherwise we would have more activity and there would be a group of people about 9 people are are expected to arrive here at any minute so your your point is well taken i would say however that that's not really the importance of what our purpose is because our purpose is about improving is about living in the moment and not having a script and 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 what is what's information today is obsolete tomorrow and that's what ai is going to show and prove that we need to stay ahead of ai because we can become obsolete yep. absolutely Obs- you, obsolete you in, in realize you realize that ai to a sense is not i mean or so i say is dangerous if we don't keep ahead of it we we got a lot, we got, I'm telling you we got a lot of catching up to do. No, I I think we're already ahead of it. I'm ahead of it. If I'm ahead of it, I, there's got to be another, you know, 15 the estimate is that 15% of earth's population somewhere around a billion billion and a half people are very much like me because we are connected. We are one. If I'm if consciousness is speaking through the words that I'm presenting here tonight with you Bob in the audience that is that is the consciousness of one it's about unity it's about unconditional love that is the shift that will happen in our humanity and we are entering in the golden age of the age of aquarius which has been written about and philosophized for me- mecca since mecca and the age of aquarius is supposed to be 2000 years ahead of us of unconditional love there's no love gra- and gratitude 2000 years bob right. all we have to do is get through this sticky moment right now in society we have to turn the coin over to the other side like i said if you were in life and you were headed down a road and you do not have unconditional love stop right now and turn around and go back exactly the way that you came because god delivered you in perfection and that perfection is his or its in un- un- unconditional love for for life that's why god in, in in consciousness created us to for entertainment because mm-hmm. this is entertaining this is fun this for me this is so much energy and so rich and in the conversation is so so wonderful and i'm so thankful i just don't know i don't know what else to do you know i'm almost at a point of bursting but i have i have people arriving right now with the boat and they're downstairs at the beach and they're starting to make some noise so they're going to need my attention and i know that your time also this evening is a little bit is a little bit tight uh, and i know that you made special favors to have this friday uh, live uh, uh recording 
And I, well, I appreciate so much all the work that you're doing, Bob. When, yeah, message me. If you're going to have a bunch of people net together, maybe Sunday sometime or whatever, because usually Sunday is a good time that everybody sits around, you know, and they, they, they talk to each other and they, they put their, their questions up and things like that. And if you can get, you know, like that, them on and get their, you know, impressions or excitement of yes. what you're doing, that transfers through a video to other people that are watching it. And asking themselves the question, how can I be a part of that? That's the, exactly. part, that's the part that we want. We want the part that says, I, I have a question. How can I do this? How can I be part of it? How can I get that? How can I feel that way? You know, well, these, these are the things that are very, very important. And But if you get it like, you and I can sit here and talk about it all we want to. But we, we already know where, where we're coming from. But when you get a third party or the per, the people that are getting off that boat that are excited about it and they want to do it and they, they you know, when, who, what, when, where, how, and why. Yes. I mean, that's, that is, that is the part that you really, really want to put down on, on video. This is good, but that's better. Yes. Well, this is the start and we're learning together, Bob. And, 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 and there's going to be a little bit of challenges ahead of us only if we have conditions, if we can come together, unconditional love, all of those problems and challenges and difficulties wash away. They totally wash away. And so they don't exist. Those are, those are like the fog in our mind and the confusion that we have. It's just, it just doesn't exist when, when you're, when you're in, in unconditional love, in the state of unconditional love. And so, okay. So let's do this. I wanted to, uh, I appreciate you. If you are making an offer to actually having a follow-up call on, on, at, at three o'clock Eastern time on Sunday is when we're going to be closing uh, like the ceremony. And we're oh. going to be doing, and, and if you're available, that would be great because this is the first conversation. And then you can see, you can see for yourself the enthusiasm that I have is not changing, is unwavering, because I know exactly the problem now, Bob. We have conditions for the love that we share in this, in this planet. I'm not saying people are, are bad people. It's just that we got to get rid of the conditions. It's very that, that simple. And with attorneys making things complicated, our judicial system being yeah. totally with loopholes and red tapes and hush orders, in, in attacks on whistleblowers and all sorts of problems with the judicial system, you know, we need to have no more conditions. We need to clean up and clean up our society and go through that catharsis. And we can do it together. And technology can take us there very quickly, like so quick that, you know, maybe even this week you're going to call back and say, David, I couldn't believe, but now unconditional love is taking fire over this whole planet. That's what everyone is talking about. That's all we, we, I don't want to say should talk about, but that's all that's important. There's nothing important other than that. Our purpose is to feel that. If we can feel unconditional love, we can surrender our soul and we can become stars in, in, in other parts of the universe if that's where, where our energy is going. Otherwise, if we live conditions, Karma is going to force us to come back and live again and again and again and again until we learn unconditional love. Thank okay. you. Thank you again. There you go. We're sorry. And we're, we'll be like out of here, but we're going to do this again, though, right? Yeah. yeah. We're definitely going to do it again. Ladies and gentlemen, this tape, this video is not for us. It's for you. This is so you can learn, you can feel, you can energize yourself into the person you really are. So many don't know who you really are. Love yourself and you'll begin to find out. Mr. David Ferdinand in Brazil is here for you tonight. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to have 
tag to this, the information of where you can get in touch with him, how you can get in touch with him, how you can write to him. I even have his email address. Oh, my goodness. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, God bless y'all. Bob Charles.